can Jesus heal you? Can Jesus heal you? Now, probably right off the bat, all of us would say, well, yeah. So why doesn't he? Why doesn't he heal us? And that's what I really want to focus on this morning. Can Jesus heal us? Simple answer, yes. So why doesn't he? And that's a much more complicated answer. So um, let me ask you some questions. What are some health issues that you wish didn't exist in the world? Diabetes, Diabetes yeah. It's amazing how many people that affects. Asthma, yeah. Cancer, yeah, I thought I thought that would be number one, actually, but yeah, they say it will affect one in two of us. Wow, wow. It actually affects a lot more than that because uh, even if you don't get it, it still affects you. Theo? Chili peppers. Oh, right. Yeah, well, <laughs> those certainly can affect you. <laughs> Tell me. HIV AIDS, yeah. Mental health, yeah, definitely. Addictions, Addictions yep. High blood pressure, High blood pressure yep, yep. We actually, we could go on and on and on. And it, and it seems the more we learn about health, the more problems there are. And in fact, that's what Solomon said. With much knowledge comes much vexation. The more we know, the more trouble there is. It used to be just, well, he's not feeling very well, and then he died one day. Well, now we know why he died, and that actually he's been ill for a long, long time. Um, so sometimes uh, there's lots of health issues that we didn't exist. What are some health issues that are self-inflicted? Addictions. Sometimes addictions, yeah. Overeating. Overeating, yeah, which is an addiction, isn't it? Yeah. I think that there are some that you inflict on others. Yeah. So you know that I see children who are as they are as a result of their parents' addiction. Yep, yep. Or, much worse, like their birth parents. Right. them in a rage. Mm-hmm, yep. Um, that was actually going to be my next question, oh, but sorry. there you go. No, no, it's great, yeah. Yeah, the point is, as we think through all of these health issues that we just wish didn't exist in the world, we start to realize that some of them actually are our own faults. And, and, and the further and further away from creation we get, the more that sin has a stronghold on humanity, which means that those things become more and more evident. It's why we, we are seeing a rise in those things. Not necessar that's not necessarily the result of, or, or cancer or, or things like that are necessarily the result of that. But we do see the far-reaching effects of our own choices and how we live our life. And, and how that affects so many things that we just wish didn't exist. Um, well, there was a disagreement amongst the Jews in Jesus' day about why there were health problems. Um, let, me, let me give you a little bit of stuff that I found out in my research. Generally, Jews believed that everything in life had a reason. Nothing happened for no reason. There had to be something behind it that caused it. That was their belief system. And I say this because it'll help us to understand why the disciples asked Jesus the question in the first place. Number one, it was almost universally accepted that anything bad in life was the result of sin. So anything bad that would happen to you, you must have committed some sort of sin or some sin was involved. This is what they believed. It was actually one of the main factors behind why they kept the law. Because if they didn't keep the law, then something bad would happen to them. And we even see that reinforced sometimes by the way they interpreted the Old Testament. A lot of Jews and Pharisees, believe it or not, in fact, something close to 50% of them, believed in something called tr soul transmigration. We call it reincarnation. They believed that if you were a bad person, and you ended up not getting punished sufficiently for your sins in this life, that your soul would end up in a new body after you died. And then something bad would happen to that body that would finish off the punishment that you had done previously. Sometimes you would be born with something um, bad, but that was since that baby hadn't actually done anything bad yet, it must be the result of a previous life when the soul was in a previous body. Soul transmigration. A lot, a lot of Jews and, and, um, and Pharisees believed in that. Many Jews and Pharisees believed that a fetus could commit sin. 
before it was born. Somehow it could commit sin. And therefore, if it was born with something bad, that was because they had to find a reason. And if it's bad, it must be sin. So either it committed sin in a previous life, or maybe it committed sin in the womb. And they taught these things. The Pharisees are the, the, the spiritual leaders of, of the Jews. So a lot of Jews also believed um, that sins of the fathers could be passed down. So if a parent had committed some sort of sin, and then the punishment for that was actually passed on to the child. So with that in mind, that's where we come to as our context. So the first thing I want to look at this morning is the, asking the question, are all bad things in life the result of specific sin? Are all bad things in life the result of specific sin? Because that's what these guys thought. So let's look at this. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. So something bad has been going on in this person. In their mind, because he's blind, somebody caused it. Since he's been blind from sin, or since he's been blind from birth, that means either he committed a sin in the womb, or he's now paying the punishment from a previous life, or possibly his parents. Those are the three options, but somebody must be responsible. So they said to him, Rabbi, now these are his disciples, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents? Because we can see that he's paying the punishment for something, because he's born blind. Well, this, um, let me read you something that I, I found out this week from a man called Adam Clark, one of the commentators that I read. Most Asiatic nations have believed in the doctrine of transmigration. So it wasn't just Jews, it's, it, it's uh, the world over. The Hindus still hold to it. And they profess to tell precisely the sin which the person committed in another body by the afflictions which he endures in this. So they can look at a person and they can see the things that are bad thing that's happening and they can tell what in a previous life he committed. That's what they think. For instance, they say that the headache is a punishment for having in a former state spoken irreverently to father or mother. There you go, hon. That's why you have headaches all the time because you were irreverent to your parents in a previous life. Madness is a punishment for having been disobedient to father or mother or to one's spiritual guide. Epilepsy is a punishment for having, in a former state, administered prison to any one of the command of his master. So you put someone in prison, so now you have epilepsy. Pain in the eyes is a punishment for having in another body coveted another man's wife. Blindness is a punishment for having killed his mother. So that's what these people are all of a sudden thinking. But this person, they say, before his new birth will suffer many years torment in hell. So they get punished here and then they still go to hell. So you can you can you can see, and believe it or not, I run into people still today in, in Britain that say they believe in reincarnation and, and hold to some of these same thoughts. Yeah. Yeah, some of them will go back and say, oh, well, and, and that's also why in a lot of these places, in a lot of these belief systems, there's not a lot of help for people who are suffering with these issues because they believe they're being punished justly. And it's wrong to actually step in and help them. And, and all of a sudden you realize the, the demented and twisted attitudes that sin brings about, don't they? It's all of a sudden, these are the result of not believing in grace. This is what happens when you don't believe that God can step in and overcome our failings. And you have to do all of the work yourself. That's, that's where these ideas come from. Do you ever wonder why bad things are happening to you? Yeah? 
I mean, sometimes we must, we must, we must think at some point in our life when things go, and we have a really bad day. Honestly, I, I start thinking that way, and then I start to remember, actually, it's because I didn't plan ahead. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't have to do all of this stuff on today, rush through it, and not get any of it right. So, yeah, I do think about it, but then I, I quickly know why. Um, do you ever start thinking through bad things you've done and wonder if you're being punished for them? Do you ever think through things in your life and you think, oh, I bet you that's what's happening now. Most people, even Christians, even Christians that hold fast to grace, sometimes start to wonder. <clears throat> Some of the things that happen to you are as a result of your sin because you've done something yep. that wasn't wise. Do you have my notes? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the very next question, are some of the bad things the result of poor choices? <laughs> yeah, James just wants to get this going. Don't dawdle on that question and go on to the next one. <laughs> well, this is called natural consequences, isn't it? And I want you to think about something. This is something that really hit me hard this week. There are universal laws that God has put in place to help prevent certain behaviors. They're called natural consequences. They are things that if we do them, then something else will happen bad to us immediately or sometimes down the road. But they are the result of our choices without doubt. And God does that to prevent us from acting in certain ways they're universal laws they apply to everybody all the time can you think of some of those well i can yeah i mean you know i married a non-believer first time and i had an unhappy marriage um, mm. and a really painful divorce mm. then i went and did it a second time but <laughs> god had grace god had grace and yeah and, mm -hmm. and, and you know yeah nice things happen to Tony. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> what happens if you spend all your money? You go broke. Well, yeah. Natural consequences, you don't have money, right? If you spend it all, it, sometimes we say you can't have your cake and eat it too. But if you spend all your money, the natural consequences is now you can't pay your bills. Or you can't do this or you can't do that. That's a natural consequence. It's a thing that God has set in place to try and curb certain behavior. What happens if you step off a ladder? You fall down. It's a universal law. It's natural consequences. You can't, you can't step off a ladder. You can step off a ladder and say, God, please don't help me get hurt. Or please help me not to get hurt. But you can't step off a ladder and say, God, please don't let me fall. You're going to fall. That is a law that God has put into place. And it's to prevent you from stepping off ladders. Or jumping off cliffs or falling out of airplanes or going on roller coasters <laughs> yeah <laughs> what happens if you pick up a poisonous snake you're gonna get bit and you're probably gonna get really ill or even die you can ask God not to do that but he has put that in place so you leave that thing alone what happens if we smoke or if we overdose on pills chances are we're gonna get ill Chances are it's not going to help us in a positive way. Those are natural consequences. I wonder how many of the things that we said, I wish this disease did not exist in the world. Or I wish that God would take this thing out of the world. That actually is our own fault. It's the choices that we make day in and day out. We're going to get back to this, but I need for us to understand that when, when Jesus came and healed this man of blindness, it, it was not just a general rule that anything bad that ever happens in life, we can just say, God, please take this away. Because that's not the way God works. And he doesn't work that way on purpose. We need to make sure that we're not wondering why God chooses not to overcome the laws of nature that he has established for all people. Because when those laws are abided by, he is glorified. He sets forth rules, natural consequences. And when we obey them, he gets the glory. 
and everything God does is for his glory. So if we break one of God's laws of natural consequence, it's kind of silly for us to come back and say, God, would you break your laws to help me out? Well, that doesn't bring glory to God, does it? That makes us a lawbreaker. Now, it's not as black and white as that. So make sure you keep paying attention to what I'm saying, all right? When the disciples ask, who sinned, this man or his wife, it's not exactly the same thing because they believe that every single bad thing in life happens because God is punishing us for some sin. This man is born blind. Did he sin in another life? Did he sin in the womb? Did his parents sin? And now he's being punished. Blindness was bad, so it must be a punish for, for something. That's what they're thinking. But Jesus is about to correct their thinking, isn't he? Oh, here we go. God has a much bigger plan than one plus one equals two. By the way, if you're following along in your notes, I know we've only just been putting these along, but uh, that's the next one. God has a much bigger plan than one plus one equals two. Look what he says in verse three. Jesus answered, it was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. He has actually just turned everything on its head. Because at their core, they have been taught by everybody that they respect, their parents, Pharisees, everybody, their grandparents, it's always been taught that if it's a bad thing, it must be the result of sin. And Jesus just said, no, not at all. All those people were actually lying to you. Some things that happen to us are the result of sin. Some bad things are because we make poor choices or parents have made poor choices and we bear the uh, results of that. Some things. But he said, not this guy. This man is not blind due to sin, either his or his parents. No one is to blame for his blindness. There are a lot of illnesses and diseases in the world. No one is to blame for that. It's not their fault. It's not anybody's fault. And then he says something startling, shocking. This man is blind so that God can be glorified. What? This man is blind so that God can be glorified? Surely people are glorified when they enjoy sight. Surely God is glorified when, when, when the wonderful gift of sight and being able to enjoy his creation. So why are there circumstances, why are there times when God withholds that for his glory? Well, let me, let me say a few things. And, and, it, and I, this really helped me as I thought through this. Because I see people suffering all the time. And I hate it. I hate to see people struggling with pain i hate to see people who are maybe missing a limb or maybe they're they're unable to speak or hear or see or 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 a, maybe a mental illness or it, it really bothers me and i want you to think through this when god inflicts and i put that word in inverted commas when god inflicts bad things on us he will give the strength and grace to handle it if that has come from God, then he will give strength and grace to be able to handle whatever that thing is. And that's how God is glorified through the bad thing. This man would have been given grace and strength to handle his blindness. We might think, well, at least he was never able to see, so he's got that going for him. But that's not the point. The point is he was able to live a life that God wanted him to live because that blindness was from God. Just like many of the struggles that we have. They don't know any different. Mm -hmm. And so our blind children hear brilliantly. Yeah. From a distance, hello, music, Jane. Because yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You know, um, and we need to get away from the idea of curing someone and accepting them for the creation of God. Exactly, exactly. And I've learned more about God's creation through my job. 
Yeah, I, I totally believe that. Don't, uh, and if, are these kids, they're not going to have to worry about paying a mortgage or... Mm -hmm. <laughs> they get to be children forever. Absolutely. Yeah, and, yeah. And that is yeah. so mm -hmm. No, no, but you're absolutely right because if this, if this thing is from God, for God's glory, God will give the strength and grace to handle it. That's how he gets the glory. When we inflict bad things on ourselves, poor choices, whatever, when, when whatever the health issue is our own fault, God may choose to heal us. He may do that. He may break his own laws. But we need to be careful that we don't insist on it or expect it. We need to be careful that if we step off a ladder and God doesn't uh, prevent us from getting hurt, we don't blame God for that. You know, it, it happens. The question comes up all the time. If God is so good, why are bad things happening? Because people are bad. Because people do bad things. You can't blame God because people are doing bad things. God can step in and he does there are things that we inflict upon ourselves that we say god would you take this away from me and sometimes occasionally he will but he will only do it for his glory he won't do it just to make our life happier or just to make our life more comfortable he will do it for his glory he is not obliged to step in and deliver us and I'm going to say something controversial here. You may disagree with me. He's not even obliged to sustain us supernaturally through mistakes that we make ourselves. And we need to be careful that we don't insist that God overcome our stupidness. Stupidity, I guess, is the word, huh? Or stupidness. That God does not overcome that. We don't insist that God overcomes our poor choices because God is not obliged to. That's the point that Jesus is making. It wasn't him and it wasn't his parents. This is a gift from God. This is a totally different ball of wax. And then he says, God's plans must be carried out one way or another. Look at this. We must work the, we must work the works of God, of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When Jesus says we, I believe he's referring to us and him and the Holy Spirit working hand in hand to fulfill the Father's plans. Working together. Remember John eight twelve? It was probably about six months ago. Jesus says he was the light of the world. We're still in that day. Because when Jesus left, he made us the light of the world. He gave us the spirit to be the light of the world. So working the plans of the Father is still going on, even now. And we're involved in that. As long as Jesus in the, is in the world, and that means even now, then there is time to keep working with him to fulfill the Father's plans. And sometimes that means being heal, healed and bringing glory to God even sometimes when we've self-inflicted that that harm sometimes that's what the, that's what the plans of the father are sometimes it means being healed and bringing glory to god sometimes it means being wise and avoiding natural consequences and thus bringing glory to god by abiding by his rules saying you know what i'm not going to step off this ladder because i know what happens praise god it might mean, you know, I'm not going to take up some habit that I know is going to be harmful to me. Praise God. But if we do it for our own glory, we need to be careful. We need to do these things for God's glory. And sometimes it means bearing a God-given affliction and showing God's strength and grace again for his glory. So whatever we do, we do it what did Paul say? For the glory of God. Whether I eat or whether I drink or whether I abide by God's laws or whether I put up with the afflictions that he's given me. I do it for his glory. Or I ask him to take it away and he does. And that's for God's glory as well. Or I ask him to take it away and he doesn't. And that's still for God's glory. 
Jesus doesn't always heal. I meant to, uh, have you guys seen that meme on Facebook? It's some guy sitting in like a dinner jacket and a big, ja and a big overstuffed chairs. And he, and he always says, I don't always something, but when I do something, haven't seen those? Yeah, I was going to put a picture of that up there. But Jesus doesn't always heal, but when he does, is for God's glory. Does God heal? Can God heal? Let's all say it together. Yes, he can. But if he does, it will be for God's glory. And if he doesn't, it will be for God's glory. Look at what he says. Having said these things, he spit on the ground and he made mud with the saliva. By the way, I brought some in. Do I have a, a volunteer? I didn't think so. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I mean, luckily the guy couldn't see what was going on. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he just, uh, he just knows, so, oh, that feels nice. Do you have any idea what that is, buddy? <laughs> Jesus, he, he, makes, he makes some mud with his saliva. He anointed the man's eyes with the mud, and he said to him, go, wash that off in the pool of Siloam. So he went, and he washed, and he came back seeing. I want to rush through this because um, we do need to get moving, but also this is why we do Bethel Steps. Because in the next 45 minutes, we're going to go deeper into some of these things that we don't quite get into. In verses 6 and 7, he healed the man. He didn't use words like he has done in so many times. He just used words and healed the man. He decided not to do that. He didn't tell the man to repent of his sin so he could be healed, which he had done in, the time, in times past. He just made mud with his spit. He rubbed it in the man's eyes. And when working with Jesus which is what we saw when working with Jesus to fulfill the father's plans, working together, we must keep doing this. When we're doing that, we need to be prepared for anything. We need to be prepared for mud in our eyes. If that's what God chooses. And the people wondered, didn't they? The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, is this not the man who used to be, who used to sit and beg? We know this guy. His eyes look different, but yeah, that's him. I know that's him. And some, no, it's a guy who looks like him. Can I be awfully unpolitical here? We're all Jewish. We all look the same. That's not what's going on at all, is it? So, oh, I don't think that's him. Yeah, that's him. No, he looks just like him. And the guy's going, no, it's me. I'm the guy. He used to be blind and now I can see. And honestly, that's the struggle with giving God the glory when he does heal, isn't it? Because everybody wants to find a reason why. How many times has Dave been told this or that or the other thing? And Dave knows in his heart, I know who healed me. And Dave needs to keep saying, I'm the man. I was healed by God. And when God does heal us for his glory whether it's an affliction he gave us in the first place or whether it's self-inflicted. When, when that happens and there are doubters, we need to be strong and we need to be vocal and we need to say, no, this was God. Because that's why he did it in the first place, so that he gets the glory. But the key to healing is disobedience, or is obedience, and I'm going to close with this. So they said to him, then how were your eyes opened? He said, the man called Jesus made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and washed. So I did. I went and I washed and I received my sight. It's that simple. Can Jesus heal us? Absolutely. But he will require obedience. We, we have opened up a lot of cans of worms this morning. And I hope you're planning on sticking around for Bethel step, Steps, not just for the pastries and the and the lovelies but so we can talk more about why these things happen let's close um matt's going to come and lead us in some songs and after the third song mary is going to come and share her testimony of how she came to know the lord hopefully in just a couple minutes and then uh, we're going to receive her into church membership and um, if you would like to talk more with me about joining the church, we would love to do that. And during the song, Only by Grace, we're going to take up an offering.